Hello. Oh, nice and loud. I'm Matt Bush, as, as Ashley said. Um, I'm terrible at promoting myself. There's my website address. Not too close, sorry. Sorry to shout. Um, you can get my contact details from there. Um, I'm, I'm all that stands between you and free booze and pizza, so I'll try not to take too long. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have a look at this. I was asked to aim this talk at musicians. Um, I've been playing music of some kind or another since I was about eight years old, but I am a web WordPress developer. Um, because like most people who've played music since they're eight years old, I've not made any money out of doing that at all. So <laughs> luckily WordPress came along. Um, so I'm probably the worst person, in fact, to teach you how to promote yourself using uh, the internet. But here I am. Maybe I can help somebody uh, become famous. Anyway, um, if you're promoting anything these days, it's, it's pretty much impossible to avoid social media. Um, it's also hard to avoid cheesy analogies about social media, and today's no exception. So here we go. That's um, Steve Vai, who I can't stand. Um, sorry to all the guitarists who probably worship him, but there you go. Um, yeah, trying to promote something without social media is pretty similar to trying to write a, a rock record without using a guitarist. You could use a real musician that knows how to read music, but most people insist on using guitarists, so what can we do? Um, same way you can, you know, if you've got a lot of cash, you can do TV advertising, uh, print ads, all these kind of things, but people are still going to want to know, you know, where, where do I find you on Facebook? Even Metallica have ended their, uh, I don't know how many year long war on the internet, and they now have a Facebook page as well, so it's, it's unavoidable. Um, but yeah, I mean, social media is pretty amazing. So the long and the short of it is, set up a load of social media sites, become world famous. Uh, we don't even need WordPress. We can go and get pizza. We can all go home. Um, I'll just give you a slide. You can write this down. Uh, guaranteed fame if, uh, if you do it. This is how you succeed in the music business. Start a band, start a crypto. I mean, look at all this stuff. By the time you finish with all this, I don't know what you're going to put on your gig flyers. Five, six, seven different web addresses. Um, so now your fans, 28% of your fans are too busy now catching up with their friends on Facebook. 36% of your fans got bored of your video, now they're watching Gangnam Style on YouTube. 21% of your friends, they've just discovered a much better band than yours on SoundCloud. 14% are looking at what uh, Chris Martin had for dinner on Instagram. And 1% got lost there on uh, MySpace and they don't know who the hell Tom Anderson is and why he's their friend. But luckily, there is a solution, and no big surprise what the solution is. I was quite tempted to put a Joomla logo up there just to see if you're paying attention, but there we go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right, so if we use WordPress, we can group all of these uh, many social media sites into one place. Uh, you can keep your audience in one place, and you can try and sell them some of your records as well. Sorry, records. How old am I, eh? Jeez, your MP3s. Thank you. Um, you can also, yeah, you can also add some additional content if, uh, if you so wish. Um, okay, there are considerations, however. Um, sorry, I keep pointing over there. Okay, so considerations. Um, the second biggest question after what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything is how much. And the answer to that question is very rarely 42. That's uh, for all you Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fans out there. Thank you. <laughs> OK, most musicians I've met, they've got no money. I mean, they've got cash for the essential things like um, guitar strings, skinny jeans, new pair of shoes, obviously alcohol and whatever else floats your boat. But there's not much money left over. If that's the case with you, if you're working on a shoestring, then the best option is probably to go with a WordPress.com, go with a free um, hosted solution. Um, obviously, any free service does have its limitations. I've got my friend Simon Cowell to help me here with, uh, with our limitations. The, uh, the good stuff, it's free. Free, free, free. No cost at all. There are things you can add on, but, but the basics of it are free. And it's already set up. You just fill in a, 
a quick web form and there you go, you've got a site. You don't need any technical knowledge. The data's portable, so if one day you decide to go big, start your own site, you can export all the data out of there, no problem at all. Um, on the negative sites, you don't get a custom domain name. Um, you can pay a bit more and get that. You will need a bit of technical knowledge to do that. So instead of having myband.com, you'll have myband.wordpress.com. No monetization. Um, I didn't actually know about this until I read this the other day. Apparently, you can't advertise on a, on a hosted site. Um, if you get approximately 25,000 page views a month, you can apply for something called ad control, and then you split the profits 50-50 with WordPress. Uh, my advice to you is if you're getting 25,000 page views a month, start your own website anyway. Um, and finally, you're pretty limited in the themes and plugins you can use. And in terms of plugins, I had a look at what I thought would be ideal for uh, ideal social media for, for an artist site. You've got uh, SoundCloud for your audio, Twitter to tell the world what you're thinking, Facebook's you know, a bit of everything. Um, Bandcamp, there's, there's many ways of selling your music online. Bandcamp's a, a good one. This is not a definitive list. Don't feel you have to use any of these. Songkick looks pretty awesome um, for um, loading your gigs, if you've got gigs coming up and so on. Um, YouTube video, obviously, Instagram for uh, pictures of your dinner and whatnot. Um, okay, um, so for all of these uh, on the free WordPress.com, um, Twitter and Facebook are unsurprisingly pretty well covered. There's, you can add a Twitter twit twit stream, Jesus. Twitter stream, uh, Facebook page widget. Um, there's like and share buttons, etc. No problem there. Um, SoundCloud and YouTube content. If you paste a link to either of those into a post or page. YouTube will very nicely render um, the video on the page for you and so on, so that's nice. Um, then you move on, Bandcamp, they provide you with a share button, so you can you just copy and paste the code they give you, stick it in a text widget, and there it is. Um, Songkick is a bit more long-winded. Um, you have to, the uh, best solution I could come up with is set up a Google Calendar, subscribe to the artist via that, make the calendar public, there's an RSS feed, use the RSS widget in WordPress. And Instagram, if you use a web-based service like Fologram, they will provide an RSS feed which you can use. If, bizarrely enough, if you use the Flickr widget, then that will uh, publish your Instagram pictures. Uh, appreciate for any sort of anyone out there who's new to all of this, this a lot of this makes as much sense as Steve Hoffmeyer's lyrics, but there is some, uh, you know, it's not as, as not as hard as it sounds. Uh, you'll be up and running with this pretty quickly. Um, however, with all these methods, they're pretty static. Every time you add a new track to SoundCloud, you're going to have to log in, you're going to have to stick the link on your site. It won't take long, but you're doing, essentially doing the same thing twice. So what's a much nicer solution is if, you, if you're feeling brave, uh, if you've got the cost of a few cases of beer, you can pay for hosting for a, a year probably if you go to the right place, and you can install your own WordPress site and then we can start making use of more dynamic widgets. Um, so here we've got a SoundCloud widget that's, that's showing the latest three tracks um, from a very good local band. Um, if you like Balkan Scar, that's led by a tuba player, then go check them out. Their name's Nomadic Orchestra. I don't get paid by them or anything. That's a free plug for them. Um, there's also the there for the for the gigs from um, Kick, the uh, Bandcamp widget, and a YouTube widget I found, which just serves up um, your latest content from your YouTube page. These are dynamic. As soon as you add a new video to YouTube, up it goes. Likewise with the SoundCloud, the gigs, and so on. Now, <clears throat> obviously, you won't want to stick all 50 of your tunes on a. This is a footer from a website. So you can set up a separate page, you can extend the SoundCloud uh, widget and stick everything on there. So, um, so there we go. Now, with very little effort, you've got a site that's got all your audio, video, and so on. And at this stage, it doesn't require any updating at all. It does it all, all for you um, as you update those social media sites. Um, next thing to consider is how you're going to handle your content. 
Um, if you're already a heavy Twitter user, then don't feel the need necessarily to add more to your workload. You can just uh, sync your WordPress site up with Twitter, likewise for Facebook. If you don't really use much social media, but you want to start using it, you do it the other way around. You can post to your WordPress site, and it will just push it straight out to, to those uh, mediums. I'm not going to go too much into it because we're a bit short of time. Just as an example, using these things, WordPress site, Twitter account, a Facebook page, Twitter tools uh, is a plugin I've used. There, there's probably loads out there. Um, Facebook page publish plugin. You can do any way you want. Post to WordPress and let it push those, uh, that post to Twitter and Facebook using those plugins. If your Facebook account is synced up with uh, Twitter accounts, then post to Facebook. Twitter will push that content to your WordPress site. Same if you post to Twitter. Word of warning, if you are going to go the route of, uh, of tweeting and that tweet being converted into a post on your site, Remember, it's all of your tweets that get posted. So if you're running a death metal site like this guy here, it's probably best not to tell your girlfriend you love her very much. OK, moving on. Um, we've had lots of guys from Woo Themes up here. Um, Ashley put me onto this theme um, when we we're talking about th this talk. Um, if you've got a bit of budget and you've got a bit of time, then something like this, I mean, this is awesome, this theme. I couldn't believe it when I looked at it. It's fully integrated with, um, with, Word, uh, with SoundCloud, YouTube, and so on. You just enter your, uh, your um, username or ID in there, and, and it does the rest for you. There's um, custom post types for um, band profiles, press releases, stuff like that. Um, the only thing I'll say is something like this. this. This runs off the Canvas framework, which is a fantastic framework. It does take some time. Um, so. If you, if you want to buy this theme, expect to spend a little bit of time. It's a very small learning curve, but you do have to invest a bit of time just getting your head around everything. I mean, you can pretty much customize anything that you can see there without any code knowledge at all. Um, but obviously, the more options you've got, the more you've got to learn. So just bear that in mind. Um, a few other considerations. Uh, when you get a theme, is it, is it scalable? Can you tell I'm not a graphic designer, can't you? Jeez, that's terrible. Sorry, anyway. Um, yeah, is it scalable? Um, when I started making websites many years ago, if it fit on an 800 by 600 monitor, then you were laughing, eh? Nowadays, people can be looking at your site on absolutely anything. Um, scalable just means it fits nicely to the, to the screen of the device people are looking on, so they don't have to scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, you can either go with scalable themes. Most themes coming out these days are scalable. Um, you can look at alternatives like um, uh, WP Touch is a plugin that serves up a mobile version of your site to mobile users. There is some debate as to whether you should go scalable theme or separate site, but um, I'm not going to get into that now. Um, nothing to bear in mind, short codes. Short codes are pretty awesome. Um, feature of WordPress that lets you render content in all sorts of clever ways. Just to um, yeah, continue with Woo Themes, they, they've got a pretty cool one that lets you easily put columns of text on a page that normally be full width. Just one thing to bear in mind, if you change themes and the theme you change to doesn't support that short code, you're going to end up with a load of text like that with literally the square bracket, the short code around it. So. Be sure that you've got the right theme before you go and load you know, thousands and thousands of pages of content in. It's nothing to be scared of. Short codes are good. But yeah, just make sure the theme is, is the one you want. Um, this actually came up when I was preparing for this talk. Um, excerpts or content. Your standard WordPress homepage would have, say, your latest 10 posts, maybe a paragraph, and then a read more link for each one. Some themes use just serve that content up. Normally, others will use excerpts. Um, an excerpt won't, for example, if you put a YouTube video in the introduction, it won't serve that up unless you go and actually get the sort the, go to the YouTube site, get the embed code, stick it in there. Um, I found this to be a problem with um, sites I've made for for artists and bands in the past because 
a lot of them do want to see their YouTube video on the home page. They don't want the user to have to click through to look at it, so it's something to bear in mind. Plugins. Is the plugin being updated regularly? If, it's, if the plugin's doing something pretty basic, then maybe it's not, not such an issue. But uh, yeah, especially plugins that relate to social media. Social media sites change their APIs all the time. WordPress releases updates. If the plugin you're using was released in 2008, updated once in 2009 and nothing since, if it does still work, it probably won't work for long. So just keep an eye on the, find the plugin on WordPress.org, check the um, change log tab, and uh, you'll get an idea of how, how regularly that thing is being updated. Um, this has been touched on a lot already today. Load. First thing I did when I discovered WordPress years back was just bung every plugin I could find on there. It's amazing. Suddenly I don't have to write code anymore. This, this plugin will do this, this will do that, this will do the other. Unsurprisingly, the site took about 20 minutes to load after I'd finished. So yeah, be very aware. Plugins do put a lot of load on. Um, if you're not very technically inclined, you know, the most basic thing you can do, get your site how you want it. If it's slow, then switch one of the plugins off. Is it any faster? No. OK, switch that back on. Switch this one off. It's tedious, but it's a very quick and easy way to establish if, if one of your plugins is causing a big problem. It may well be a combination of them. Try and avoid using too many plugins. Be nice. Anybody who develops a plugin or a theme and gives it to you for free has given up time and energy. Um, guys who make pl plugins, they range from people's, some of the geniuses we've had up here today who can probably t churn out 10, 50 plugins while I do this talk with their eyes closed, all the way through to people who uh, they did a project, they wrote a bit of custom code to solve a problem, and they thought it'd be nice just to give it out to anybody else. Don't go and have a tantrum because the thing doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. If it's a broken plugin, don't use it. If it's not absolutely what you want, ask the developer if he'll do something with it. But don't go and have a strop about it, because God breaks a guitar string every time you abuse a plugin developer. OK. Final one is uh, in terms of updating. Um, obviously, WordPress started out as you know, blogging software. You, you logged in online, you updated. These days, we're all doing everything on the go, mobile phones, apps, etc. cetera. Um, the WordPress app is still in its infancy. Um, I find it very, very fiddly to use. Um, granted that I do use it um, only for updating a site that I run where I rake wine. So I've normally just drunk a bottle of wine when I'm trying to use the thing, so I'm probably not the best test driver. But it is, it's fiddly. It's, it's um, even something like adding a Post thumbnail isn't the easiest thing to do. So um, when you're picking a theme especially, if, it, if updating a post is going to involve filling in a load of custom fields, you might uh, want to rethink if, you, if you're going to be using the app a lot. So um, yeah, that's it pretty much. Hopefully there's some things in there to help you all uh, become rich, famous rock stars. Before I go, just the golden rule. Um, yeah. All of this stuff works, but unless you follow the golden rule, you're not going to get anywhere. Don't let the drummer get involved. Thank you very much. <laughs>